In our last video, we talked about how we obtain a null and alternate hypothesis. Now let's talk a little bit about what kinds of conclusions we might get, what kinds of tails uh, tests we might have, uh, and we're going to talk some about p-values as well. All right, so some possible conclusions we could get is we could get a conclusion that we reject the null. So when we reject the null, what we are saying is we have some evidence that the alternative might be true. Right, so if I think that the mean for something happens to be 3, so if that's the null hypothesis, and my alternate hypothesis is that the mean is actually bigger than 3, and we happen to get a sample where the mean of the sample is 317. That mean of 317, that's some pretty good evidence, maybe, um, depends on the setting, but it looks like it's probably pretty good evidence that the mean is actually bigger than 3. Now, does it mean that the mean is three for the entire population is 317? No, uh, it just says it looks like the mean should be something bigger than 3. The other thing that we could have, the other conclusion we could come to is we don't reject the null, we fail to reject the null. So when we fail to reject the null, what we are saying is there is not sufficient evidence of the alternative. So one key thing to observe here is we're not saying that the null hypothesis is true, we're just saying there's not evidence of the alternative. So if we had the null hypothesis, the mean is equal to 3, and the alternate hypothesis, the mean is actually bigger than 3, if we took a sample and our sample came up with something like 3.1, is that evidence that the alternate is true? Well, not necessarily. We'd have to look and know things about how many items were in our sample. Uh, but it could be that if we got a mean of 3.1, it could it's still reasonable to believe that the mean for the entire population is 3. That's still a perfectly legitimate possibility, uh, depending on sample size and how some other things play into it. Right? So we won't ever uh, accept the null. We will just fail to reject the null. So if you're actually setting up a scientific experiment of your own where you're going to do some hypothesis testing, usually the thing you would like to try to prove to be true, you will want to set up as uh, not the null hypothesis, but instead you want to set it up as the alternate hypothesis. So that if you go through this testing and you reject the null, you can say, I do in fact have evidence of this thing that I believe to be true. If you set it up as the null, the best you will ever hope for is, well, it's not necessarily false. It could be true, uh, but you'll never say, we have evidence that it is true. All right. So with our hypothesis test, we have a couple different types of tests. Uh, so we have one-tailed tests or two-tailed tests. So one-tailed test, that will occur when we have something where we have the parameter is greater than uh, some number or the parameter is less than some number. Right? So a left-tailed test occurs when we have our parameter is less than a number. So you might see something like the proportion is less than 0.5 or the mean is less than 0.5 or the standard deviation is less than 0.5. A right-tailed test, that occurs when our parameter is bigger than a number. So there you might see something like the mean is bigger than 3, or the, mean, uh, the standard deviation is bigger than 3. So a greater than sign, when we are saying the parameter is greater than a number, that's a right-tailed test. When you're saying the parameter is less than a number, that is a left-tailed test. Uh, if instead of saying greater than or less than, if you are saying something like the parameter is not equal to a value, is not equal to a number, so like sigma is not equal to 1.4, then this is a two-tailed test. Right. So we could have a one-tailed test uh, that is either a left-tailed test or a right-tailed test uh, or a two-tailed test. Uh, 
what we will be thinking about, what we'll be imagining kind of in a general case is we're imagining like a normal distribution. And with that normal distribution for a left-tailed test, we're saying that the alternate is that it's actually smaller than some value. And so if we are in this left tail, if we're in that left tail, we'll say we have some evidence of the alternate. Uh, it looks like it's far enough away. For a right tail test, you have this normal distribution. And we say if it's more than this value, that's going to be evidence. And so if we happen to be in that right tail, we have evidence of the alternative. And for a two-tailed test, you're saying, I don't care if it's to the left, too far to the left or too far to the right. If it's either in this right tail or this left tail, in either one of those two tails, then that will be evidence of the alternative. Right. So that's our uh, different types of tests. With hypothesis tests, we will calculate p-values. These p-values they are not the same as um, the little p that is used in proportion. Uh, so we'll calculate p-values. The way you calculate a p-value is you calculate the test statistic. Uh, after you have that test statistic, for a one-tailed test, the p-value is the area to the right or to the left uh, of the test statistic. If you have a two-tailed test, the p-value is the area to the right or to the left of the test statistic times 2. Uh, so that's how you could calculate a p-value. So with those, you might look at, you find that test statistic, and you can find that area to the right or to the left. Conclusions from p-values. We have two different conclusions that we could come up with, right? So we talked about those at the top, either reject the null or fail to reject the null. How do we use p-values to come up with those conclusions, to draw a conclusion? So we will have, for these hypotheses t hypothesis tests, we will have a significance level. And if our p-value is less than the significance level, when our p-value is less than the significance level, then we reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is greater than the significance level, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So if it's less than, then we reject the null hypothesis. If it's greater than, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Uh, there's a nice little mnemonic device that people use that says if the p-value is low, the null must go. Right. So if the p-value is low, the null must go. We reject the null hypothesis. And if the p-value is high, the null will fly. Or the null is our guy. Um, when we say the p-value is high, the null is okay, it will fly. We're not saying we accept the null, we're just saying, yeah, it's reasonable to believe the null hypothesis. So that is how we go about making conclusions for uh, our hypothesis tests. All right, we'll see you again in our next video.